Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. Hello and welcome to the very first video of Pharmacology series. In today's video, we look into the routes of drug administration. Medicine administration is a core responsibility of a healthcare professional in healthcare settings. The way in which medicines are administered will to some extent influence their clinical benefit and whether patients experience any adverse effects. There are two main factors which determine whether a medicine will reach its intended site of action in the body or not. These factors are the bioavailability of the drug and how it is given, that is the route of administration of a drug, the focus of today's video. The bioavailability of a drug is the proportion of a drug that reaches the systemic circulation and is therefore available for distribution to the intended site of action. Medicines given as intravenous or IV injections are said to have 100% bioavailability as they directly enters into the circulation and reaches to the target site rapidly. However, most medicines do not have this level of bioavailability by the oral route. So the dose given orally for any desirable effect is usually given in a higher dose. These drugs that are administered orally must pass from the stomach to the intestine and then to the liver via the portal circulation. Much of the drug dose is reduced via metabolism by gut flora or digestive enzymes of the liver before they can even make into the general circulation. This phenomenon is known as the first pass effect. The first pass effect refers to the combined effect of metabolism of the drug by the liver and in the gut, hence reducing the bioavailability of the drug given orally. Let's draw a graph and look at the bioavailability of drugs given orally and intravenously. The bioavailability of a drug when given intravenously will be 100% as the drug directly enters into the circulation. The bioavailability then drops down over time. However, the bioavailability of a drug given orally will be 0% initially, which will then raise progressively but not to the extent the IV and then it will drop down over time just like the drug given intravenously. Looking into these most basic concepts, it's really important to keep those five rights of drug administration in mind before prescribing any drug. These five rights are the right patient, the right drug, the right time, the right dose and finally the right route. A route of drug administration in pharmacology simply means the way by which a drug is taken into the body. This route of administration as well as the formulation, that is the type of the drug, whether it's a tablet, a capsule or liquid, can highly influence the bioavailability of a drug. The route of drug administration is divided into three main types of enteral, topical and parenteral routes, each of which has further subcategories. Let's begin with the enteral route. In the enteral route, which is further divided into the oral, the sublingual, buccal and the rectal routes, the drug is administered into the body through the gastrointestinal tract. Both ends of the GI tract can be utilized, the mouth or the anus. The oral route is the most common route of drug administration because it is simple, convenient and readily used by patients to self-administer their medicines. The first pass effect is an important consideration for orally administered medications. Since there is a first pass effect in oral route of drug administration, which reduces the bioavailability of the drug, that's why in order to increase the drug efficiency given by the oral route, a wide range of oral preparations are available. These include enteric coatings and extended release preparations. An enteric coating is a chemically protective envelope that protects the drug from the stomach and hence delivering it to the less acidic intestine where the protective coating of the drug dissolves and finally the drug is released and absorbed into the circulation for its desirable effects. Extended release preparations on the other hand have special coatings or ingredients that control drug release, thereby allowing for slower absorption and prolonged duration of drug action. Extended release formulations are beneficial for drugs with short half-lives. Drugs with short half-lives eliminates from the body faster as expected, so obviously a large dose over time will be needed. 
In order to reduce the dose, these preparations are made in such a way that controls the drug release and instead of a high dose, smaller dose of drug are administered. The sublingual and buccal routes involve placement of drug under the tongue in the sublingual route or between the cheek and gums in the buccal route. In both of these routes, the drug is directly absorbed by the circulation under the mucosa. Both buccal and lingual routes have several advantages over the oral route in that they are rapidly absorbed and the first pass metabolism is avoided. The fourth enteral route of drug administration is through the rectal mucosa. This route is occasionally used as a site of drug administration when the oral route is compromised because of nausea and vomiting or unconsciousness of the patient. The second main route of drug administration is the topical route. The topical route is administration of a drug through the skin or through the mucus lining of body orifices. Topical route of drug administration provides a high local concentration of the drug without affecting the general circulation. The topical route is further subdivided into the epidermic, the transdermal and the installation routes. The epidermic route involves the application of creams, ointments and lotions that are applied to the skin surface. In transdermal route, a transdermal patch is used. The transdermal patch is a medicated adhesive patch which is placed over the skin to deliver specific and controlled dose into the bloodstream for a period of time. The drug enters the bloodstream by a process of diffusion at a controlled rate. Installations include liquids or semi-solid preparations introduced into the conjunctival sac of the eye, into the air, nose or open wounds. The final route which we will study is the parenteral route. In the parenteral route, a drug is directly administered into the bloodstream. The parenteral route is the only invasive routes of drug administration and involves injection with a needle either into a vein, a muscle or underlying skin tissues. In this route, the drug passes the first pass effect, hence the bioavailability of the drug incredibly increases. This route is useful in unconscious patients and in circumstances where a rapid effect of the drug is needed. However, this route of drug administration is irreversible and may cause pain, fear, local tissue damage and infections. The four main parenteral routes of drug administrations are the intravenous, intramuscular, the subcutaneous and the intradermal routes, all of which are performed with the help of a needle. The intravenous or IV injection is the most common route of the parenteral route. In IV route, a drug is injected directly into a vein. IV injections are useful for drugs that when given orally are poorly absorbed by the GIT. This route permits rapid absorption of a drug. The intramuscular route is injection of drug into the muscle. Based on the drug formulation, drugs given through the intramuscular route can be either absorbed slowly or quickly. In the subcutaneous route, the drug is injected into the subcutaneous tissue. The drug absorbs via simple diffusion and is much slower than the intravenous route. The risks of hemolysis or thrombosis observed with IV injection is minimized in the subcutaneous route of drug administration. The intradermal route involves injection into the dermis, which is the more vascular layer of skin lying under the epidermis. Another route of drug administration which is worth mentioning here is the inhalational route. This route provides rapid delivery of drug across the large surface area of mucous membranes of the respiratory tract and pulmonary epithelium. This route is convenient for patients with respiratory disorders such as asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as the drug is delivered directly to the site of action thereby minimizes any systemic side effects. So this was some basic concepts of pharmacology in a nutshell. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video and comment if you have any questions or suggestions. For updates on upcoming videos, please turn on the bell icon so that each time a video is uploaded, you get a notification. Thank you for watching.